Hi everyone, this is our channel, Meet the Real Story. Please, like, share and subscribe. I'm a musician. Not a terribly great one, but still, I consider myself a musician. I know my way around an instrument or two. More importantly, I'm a collector. I love collecting things, starting from coins to lottery tickets. There's no rhyme or reason to my collection. It consists of anything uniquely interesting I can get my hands on. That is why when I saw an ad on Craigslist for a vintage, rustic, red piano, I could not help but reach out to the seller. The ad's title seemed normal enough. It said, Old Piano, Read a Good Home. It was nothing out of the ordinary, and not something that would normally grab my attention. Still, I felt a strange need to click on it. Perhaps I was bored, or maybe I just wanted to see what it looked like. Either way, I gave in to the temptation. There was no picture, just a story. It read something like this. I'm offering my piano to anyone who is willing to come and pick it up. It is very old, but still playable. I can prove this upon your arrival. It is red and has no brand markings. This is because it was made by my great-grandfather. It is one of a kind. He went out himself and chopped down a redwood tree to provide the material to build it. It took him many days to finally cut down the tree and much, much longer to finish making the piano. Nearly his entire life was put into this thing. I, however, have no use for it. It has been passed down in my family many times over. I have no wish to continue the tradition, and the piano is currently taking too much space in my home. I want it gone as quickly as possible. You can reach me by phone at the number listed below. Margaret. Reading the ad sparked my curiosity. One of a kind? Redwood tree? How strange and absurd. I had to see this thing. If it was half as remarkable as Margaret's description, then it was a must-have for my ever-going collection. As such, I decided to give her a call. Margaret answered the phone after the first ring and immediately asked, Is this about the piano? She was thrilled to hear I was interested. I too was thrilled, happy to know it was still available. We set up a time the next day for me to come over and take a look at it. I hung up the phone, excited as I could be. I had a feeling this piano would become the new masterpiece of my collection. Being a musician, I own countless instruments, too many to list. Each time I acquired a new item, my heart would race with excitement. The piano was no different. I couldn't wait to see it in person. I woke up the following day with no resistance to my alarm, starting my daily routine in an effort to minimize the time between me and Margaret. She said she was an early bird and that I could swing by early. With that in mind, I showered, brushed my teeth, and got dressed at a record pace. I made it out the door roughly 25 minutes after getting out of bed. It might sound silly to be so worked up over a material object, but to that I'd say, you must not be a collector. Seeing this piano in person was my mission, and it was one I intended to see through the end. I found myself at Margaret's home within an hour. It was a small cottage at a dead-end road, surrounded by a forest. There was an old tire swing in the backyard, indicating that it may have been where Margaret grew up. I wonder if her parents passed away and left her the house. Maybe the piano reminded her of them, and that was the real reason why she was getting rid of it. My speculation was interrupted by a woman racing out of the cottage to greet me. She signaled for me to come inside and went back in herself. 
This was with no doubt Margaret. I hadn't introduced myself in any way, but it wasn't likely that she received many visitors, and that's most likely because of where she lives. Eager to see the piano, I quickly jumped out of my car and made my way up to the stone walkway to the front door. Entering the house, Margaret seemed overjoyed to see me. It was overwhelming, but made things a little less awkward. She rushed me over to the room with the piano. She was so excited to show it to me, just as I was excited to see it. I matched her pace as we made our way up there. Upon entering, I stopped dead in my tracks. It was a beautiful connection of wood and ivory, the likes of which I've never seen before. It had such a striking red color with a bold finish, and the design was mind-blowing. Simple, yet elegant. Highly original, and certainly one of a kind like Margaret stated in her ad. I stood there for a moment. Margaret mistook my reaction for disinterest, quickly going off on a sales pitch about its charm and history and so on. She then sat down at its stool and placed her hands over the keys. I tuned it yesterday after your call. Let's hear how it sounds. Margaret played a beautiful piece. In addition to playing, she also sang. This is when I took my attention away from the piano and allowed myself to notice her. She was young, maybe in her 20s, her singing voice accompanied by the wonderfully rich tone of the piano has totally captivated me in a way that I can't put into words. I allowed myself to be taken by the song until she finished. Before I could compliment her, Margaret continued her well-rehearsed sales pitch. I don't know if it was her playing or her voice, but I was sold the minute she touched the keys. Because of this, I interrupted her. I'll take it. She was astounded when I said this. Really? You will? Wonderful. We were both happy and everything seemed fine, but one fact kept creeping and crawling at the back of my mind. The history of each piece in my collection is very important to me, and the piano had gaps that needed to be filled. So, have you lived in this house for your life? I asked, secretly fishing for information. Yes, as did my parents. This house is very old, older than the piano. And your great-grandfather, he lived here as well? I asked. Yes, he did. Well, redwoods don't grow everywhere, and they're truly massive. It seems unlikely that he would have made the trek out there, or even have been able to chop one down, especially with the many trees here at his disposal. It was at this point that Margaret realized I had caught her in a lie. She apologized to me, and she came clean. It would seem that the piano was made from a red tree, just not redwood. Instead, it was a strange tree located deep in a nearby forest. Being a historian, Margaret's great-grandfather knew all about it. This particular tree was a local legend, and it had always been his dream to find it. It was known as the Blood Tree a sacred place. Anyone who touched it was said to live a long life filled with luck. Those who wounded it, however, would forever know fear and misfortune. Her great-grandfather, of course, fell into the latter category. Though she claimed not to believe in the legend, she was worried the curse would scare off anyone who wanted it. Dark past or not, I still wanted it. Despite Margaret's deception, I attempted to offer her money. She wouldn't have it, insisting I just take the thing off her hands. That would have been fine, but I couldn't bring myself to offer nothing in return. Eventually, 
I convinced her and handed over an envelope with a decent amount of money in it. She accepted and helped me lift the thing into the back of my truck. I waved and drove off, satisfied with my purchase. Later on, with the help of a friend, I positioned it in the perfect spot in my living room. I had a new piece for the collection and I couldn't be happier, or so I thought. For a few days, my life continued as it normally did. My routine remained unchanged. The only difference was the new piece that grabbed my attention whenever I entered the room. After a while, I barely noticed it was there. Despite its beauty, it soon blended in with the rest of my home, much like the other items in my collection. One night, however, changed everything. I had just gone to bed when a loud bang downstairs jolted and freaked me out. I jumped out of bed and took a moment to breathe. The sound was unmistakably the piano's fallboard slamming 